As you could imagine, the life of the travelling showman has its ups and downs. There's obviously the exhilaration of performing to captivated audiences, especially children. But in between, there's countless hours of practice and the monotonous days of travel to and from each gig. Roy Malloy's show is a throwback to kinder, gentler times when the thrills and spills were real rather than computer generated. Guys, if you want to come and watch the Roy Malloy show, come on in. And I want you all to give a really big cheer for Roy Malloy. There's a timeless magic about the circus. Roy Malloy, stilt walker, stuntman, an entertainer has been sharing his magic with the world for more than a decade. He pretty much is the king of circus in my mind. I guess what we do is extreme, it's extreme circus, so when you do it face to face, it has that little bit of nail biting stuff you don't get on television, you don't get it on YouTube, uh, you can smell the sweat, you see the sparks from the hammer. Oh! Just in person just adds so much to it for them. When they see us larger than, well me, larger than life, and when Roy's up on his stilts, he's huge. And they're just like, wow, just flabbergasted by how big we actually can be and how loud and in their face we are. And just captivates them big time. The showman's is a gypsy life. Another day, another town. Today, the Roy Malloy troupe is in far western New South Wales. Burke is very special. It's just, it's iconic. Burke Show is certainly the biggest event in the Burke district and it's the biggest event in town. So we have people coming from as far afield as sort of Canamble Dubbo, certainly for all the horse events and also, you know, popping their jams and preserves. So it's a good sort of 400k radius that we draw from. How hard is it to get top line acts out to Burke? Oh look, it's really difficult and um, we do work really hard all year to get, to get some good acts, but it's very difficult when we start chasing our acts 12 months out. So yes, and we inevitably have some sort of disaster along the way and lose someone. This year, a reptile display failed to show. It's a really big priority for the committee to provide free entertainment so that people aren't putting their hand in their pocket all day at the show and, and the kids have an opportunity to see something different as well. And also for some of the young Indigenous kids to, to have an opportunity to see some entertainment. You guys go crazy for my friend! Having Roy's been fantastic. After my show, if you have spare money and you want to give it to the most worthwhile cause, I ask that you bring it and give it to Roy's Holiday Appeal. Give that I might go to Tahiti. <laughs> no, that's a lie. I want to be able to take something that's as polished and professional as I can to people that aren't getting it. I guess my stuff is very appealing to 14-year-old boys through to 20-year-old men um, because it's kind of got that G-rated but um, stunt jackass kind of feel to it. And those guys don't go to the egg show for the jam. They don't go for the chicken contest. The appeal then comes, well, we've got something that's appealing to the masculine crowd, to the children, to the grannies, to the dads, to the ute mustard guys, as well as to the quilting ladies. So we, we don't get a, a, a niche group like perhaps a clown show would. It's a broad spectrum show. They drain me of all my money, my guys. <laughs> but uh, there's a camaraderie. I mean, I've, been, I've spent years looking for the right performers. Um, Irish O'Reilly, the world's biggest strongman, he, he toured the ends of the world with me, the most loyal person there is. I warn you again, please do not try this at home. I was doing gigs everywhere, like all over the place. And then I got um, teamed up to work with Roy. And once I worked with him, I just couldn't go back. So I'm, he's kind of stuck with me now. I'm big, I'm pretty strong, I'm pretty damn strong. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. When I discovered Irish O'Reilly, um, I, was, I was actually quite shocked by how big he is. He's six foot seven, and he's quarter of a ton. He is lo logistically enormous. He's blown out the bearings in my left-hand side of my car once from being so big. The audience feels the same way. Irish O'Reilly, round of applause! Now, when you see him break a steel star stake around his neck or bite the head off a spoon, um, these are things I've never seen before in history or now. He's legitimately the world's biggest carnival strongman. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Justin Sane is everything chaplain. 
He's the Sultan of Slapstick. I mean, he, he gathers an audience because they look at him instantly and they say, this guy, everything about his movement to his vocals, his props, I want to watch it, it's going to be funny. That's why we do it, the laugh and the, the smiles and the happiness, yeah, for sure. People say, oh, do you know how far it is to Burke? And we say, ah, oh, well, actually, we do, because we live here, we know that it's, it's quite a way. For the Melbourne-based troupe, just getting here has meant a two-day trip. We did uh, 16 hours yesterday, so that's myself, that's Mittens, the burlesque performer we have, Irish O'Reilly, the strongman, and Andy Wilde, the, the ringmaster, all in the van. We did eight hours from Bathurst this morning. Um, it, this is one of the further shows we'll do because it's um, <laughs> one of the further towns in the country, but um, it's not unusual. Um, we, you know, we've done Winton. Uh, I remember getting Mount Gambia, which is a great show. And from Melbourne, I thought, how, how where? <laughs> I mean, that's a day trip now, so we do Mount Gambia. And Mount Gambia's a big show, but to get there with 15 performers is nothing. There are mishaps. We blow a few tyres and they don't just pop and go down, they just they rip apart. And trials. And every now and then we actually do have to sleep beside the road. That still happens. Um, Enzo's in the van. <laughs> Sometimes that can be nasty. <laughs> but again, part of the magic. Audiences in remote communities are generally more reserved, but they are often more appreciative. The audiences at the towns that are further away are really kind. Because um, my material is really rubbish. No, it's not. <laughs> I like to think I'm doing a good show, but they, they are, I don't want to use the word deprived, but they are really kind and they engage in a very personal way. So you get an audience that's a little bit spoiled. Uh, they roar with applause, but there's no engagement. It's not a person to person show. When we go out to the ones that never see it, it's just this brand new thing. They appreciate it a hell of a lot more. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is... Roy Malloy has just set a new world record with 550 kilograms of ice uh, lowered onto his chest. Some of them don't really know what to think at first. Whilst resting on a bed of nails, bare bones, uh, five men uh, leveled sledgehammers on top of the ice. Once they see that we're there for their entertainment and hopefully find us entertaining. He broke the ice up while he was there. He survived. He has just set a new world record. <laughs> then they just love us. He hit it so hard that one of the sledgehammers actually broke in half. I hold the world record for the tallest stilts ever walked on in human history at 57 feet which is 17 metres or a five-storey building. I encourage you to try that at home. Roy broke the world record by walking on 17 metre stilts, um, which to me is pretty hairy. I would never do that. So I don't know how he got the courage to do it, but he did it. I spent excruciating amounts of time doing logistics, but there, you know, it exists. I think it's... Um, Maybe akin to extreme rock climbing, um, you know, big abseiling, that kind of thing, but um, I'm 34 now. The age may catch up with me. I've got a lot of injuries as it is. Um, I've got disc bulges down this side from an accident. I've landed on a tightrope and put... I've got this shoulder out at the moment. Um, so the gym is three to five nights a week. Um, I run maybe 30k a week. Um, yeah, there's a lot of training involved. Whoever trains the hardest, whoever puts in the most and has the natural gifting really wins. So to be able to say to young girls, uh, and my own included, nothing's out of your limits when you really push yourself. Uh, I'm touring now with, uh, with Jet, my, my seven-year-old daughter. Um, Isabel will come on later when, she's got a, when she wants to. But Jet's proud of me, you know, and, and to have a daughter that's proud of me, a man, that, that's important to me. I'm the adult in our relationship. You're the adult in the relationship. <laughs> I want to do tightrope, and I would like to, and I would like to do hula hoops, and and I would like to go on stilts that are the exact same height as Daddy's. Roy Malloy was bitten by the circus bug early in life. My parents were um, uh, Asian missionaries, and um, we were on mission in Hong Kong. And my parents took me to see the Ringling Brothers. And it was, uh, I'd never seen anything like it. Now, I hope I create some of that for the, the people we take it to. It was live entertainment. I'd seen lots of telly. And uh, I was absolutely amazed. 
Encouraged by a mentor, he started performing at birthday parties for kids. For a number of reasons, I ended up performing busking when I should have been at school um, and living on the street for a short time.